Well, you know, for some people, it's very little. You know, they kind of stick to just the people they know. It might be 5%. It might be zero. It might be 10%. However, the average in our study was 35%. So some people are walking around and 50, 60% of the people, and this was a nationally representative study. So 50 or 60% of the people that they are interacting with on social media, they've never actually met face to face. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. I certainly agree with the comparison part. I'd like to unpack that a little bit more because I know everyone in our audience feels it. And we're now living in a world where by pulling out a device that's ubiquitous, that's in our pocket, we can see inside each other's houses. We can see what someone is doing on this fantastic trip. We can see highlight reels of complete strangers. And now we're not only comparing ourselves to our social circle, to our community, we're comparing ourselves to the entire world. And that is certainly having a mental health impact. So what is the research showing us there around comparison specifically, setting aside all of the news and the doom scrolling? And what strategies do the science show that can really help us overcome this comparison? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And comparison is very interesting because um, there's another double whammy that unfortunately we are experiencing that makes this very problematic. Okay. Yikes. I know, I know, as if as if we didn't have a, you know, a, enough. Um, <laughs> all right, so there's always been comparison, right? You know, you go into a, a, a classroom and somebody is better looking or has better, you know, um, you know, clothing or something than 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 you do. Um, you you know, you go to work and you know someone's got a better car, or, you know, something like that. Advertising then came after you know sort of just our regular social interactions and all of a sudden you're able to see that you know wow that model is really really good looking and definitely has a better car than i do however there still is sort of a part of the human being that doesn't necessarily compare yourself to you know brad pitt well, at least in my case. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, so you, instead, we are meant to, and we see this in the animal kingdom as well, you know, baboons will uh, compare themselves to other baboons that are like them. And they will try to do the same things that those similar baboons did, or they will decide not to do things that other baboons like them didn't do. But the, that other kind of baboon or that other kind of animal, I don't necessarily follow. So in my case, for example, you know, I, I, uh, I'm 52, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty small. I'm not extremely, you know, like sports inclined. So I'm not going to really compare myself to Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going to be all bummed that I don't have a quarterback rating of a hundred in 15 seasons, right? You know, that's not going to upset me. However, if one of my friends is running a 5k twice as fast as I am, that is going to upset me. In other words, we, we tend to have more challenges and we tend to compare ourselves more and more problematically to people who are in our demographic uh, you know sort of groups and so what this means is that you've got this real double whammy with social media first of all I don't I'm not friends with Aaron Rodgers I'm not friends with Warren Buffett so I'm not comparing myself to you know his portfolio but on the other hand I, I am friends with you know other people that are like me and if they've got a, a, a bigger house or a better car or a boat or something, that does, you know, sort of mean more of a challenge for me mentally. Um, and so what that means is that I'm comparing myself to exactly the group that I'm most sensitive to, but I'm not seeing them realistically uh, because they are all showing me one in 500 pictures. So it, I, I know that person. I know John, right? So I'm like, oh, that's John. 
but it's not really John. It's like an idealized version of John. It's like super John, you know? And so I really shouldn't be comparing myself to that, but I do. <laughs> and so therein lies the problem and why I think the social comparison is such is such an issue is that it's it's very, very curated, um, you know, well-produced images, but it's also about the people and the, the situations that I directly am programmed to compare myself to. One of the things that I found interesting in reading the book, you were bringing this up, but I couldn't also help but recognize that a lot of the relationships that we build online are non-reciprocal, right? Like, I've built a relationship with this YouTuber whose content I watch and who's blogging about their day, and, and I've connected to this person, but they don't have any... And I'm, I don't even exist to them, right? And so the the relationship is one way. And I'm I'm curious to know if if that not being reciprocated affects us in in any manner. I mean, we certainly we leave comments. We we tr we maybe we write them to try to get some attention to say that we enjoy their work and that we're here and and how much their work means to us. But I'm sure that has to play some sort of role mentally as if we are so connected with them, but yet, but yet we, are, we are so far away from them. It definitely does. And we actually have some science around this. So, for example, we did a study um, and published it that demonstrated that um, the number of your friends who are not face-to-face, -face, that number is directly related to depression. So, for example, if we say to a group of people, hey, what percentage of your friends, you know, that you, that you interact with regularly on social media, you know, what percentage of those people are people you've never met face to face? We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, you know, for some people, it's very little. You know, they kind of stick to just the people they know. It might be 5%, it might be zero, it might be 10%. However, the average in our study was 35%. So some people are walking around and 50, 60% of the people, and this was a nationally representative study, so 50 or 60% of the people that they are interacting with on social media, they've never actually met face to face. And what we found is that for every 10% increment, there's a significant likelihood that that person will be more depressed. And the idea is, I think, related to what you're talking about, Johnny, in the sense that if you're not being reciprocated and if you don't really know what that person is like in real life, you know, then you don't really have reality to temper some of the curating that's going on on social media. If you know the person in, you know, in real life and you see this beautiful picture of them, but you know that there's a double chin there because you've seen that double chin in real life. Then you're kind of like, okay, you know, oh, that's I, you, you look so great. But on the other hand, if you've never seen that in real life, then you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, every single person out there just is so fit and trim and and great. Um, and so I, I think that that's at least partially related to to what you're um, pointing out. Well, certainly, and and I think. This is also why AJ and I go to such great lengths within our programs. We hold uh, masterminds and get togethers quarterly so that our participants and for our own benefit, get to meet face to face the people we've been working with. And it not only solidifies those relationships, it solidifies the community and it offers more investment for our clients' success and for them to, to, to feel good for everything that they are, they are investing in themselves. And I know for our X Factor members, when we talk about wins, it's very easy to, to build up a highlight reel of all the other participants and to feel that everyone else is winning, but you're not, that you're falling behind. And then when you get to spend time together in a room and actually interact with one another, 
you really start to see the full picture that we're not seeing online. We don't have that level of resolution. And, you know, I'm, I'm either fortunate or unfortunate to live in LA and be surrounded by influencers and have seen influencers in the wild and seen how much time, effort, and energy goes into curating a photo shoot or a video shoot to get that one snapshot and all the effort that goes behind the scenes to realize, well, I don't really want to be an influencer. I don't want to put in that level of effort. But if all I'm doing is following influencers and all I'm doing is interacting in this online space, I'm really setting myself up for not only the comparison, but then also to feel really disconnected from reality. So what I wanted to touch on, and Johnny and I have talked about this a little bit. So we had Eric Weinstein on and we were talking about how Johnny's experience in the algorithm is different than my experience in the algorithm. And at times it's caused friction and we're really great friends and business partners. And we've both had to unplug and be like, okay, well, what, what's reality here? Because now I realize that I'm living in this algorithm and, and the world as it's being painted is a certain color for me and a certain color for Johnny based on what he's clicking and interacting with. And he was encountering news stories that I hadn't even heard of. He was hearing narratives that I had never come in contact with. And we're approaching Thanksgiving and we all have those family members who live on Facebook, who live in conspiracy theoryville and can actually fray real relationships in real life because of what we're consuming in social media. What is the science telling us around what's happening with misinformation, disinformation, and, and how it's fraying our real social ties, the connections we have built in real life? It's a critical issue. And, you know, piggybacking on everything that you're saying, I mean, I would even go as, to, as so far as to say, um, who are you, AJ? I mean, because I see you in one way on this platform, and I see you in a, this, in a different way in person, and I see you in a different way on this other platform, and you yourself probably almost inhabit a different persona in each of these different areas. I mean, it's always been a little bit of a challenge because, you know, we present ourselves to our parents and our teachers very differently than we present ourselves to our best friends, say, right? But you still have this sort of bit of core of identity. But I think related to what you're saying, we have such different experiences because this one is associated with this algorithm and this one is associated with this algorithm. We can even be thinking, wondering at this point, kind of who exactly are we? I think a, a, a 2.0 step above, you know, old identity formation challenges 1.0 was still difficult. I still had to figure out who I was, you know, with this group of friends versus this group of friends. But I think that the, the, the sort of tech world has, has, has put that up even another level. It's interesting um, and, and talking about that. And, and one thing that some of us have, have been dealing with is uh, no matter what platform you might be using, your success or virility, uh, your, your content going viral, it depends on how the algorithms are, are being used. So how I might interact with somebody on one platform is going to be different on uh, interacting with somebody else, not only just due to what that platform is and what it's designed for, but how the algorithms choose and use and put your stuff out there. Of course, when we see things of, like, like on Twitter, th those the most... Uh, craziest and and uh, contrarian certainly gets spread uh, much farther than say what is going to happen on instagram and how we use those both those platforms are in, in, incredibly different which paints an, an completely different picture of who that person is 